my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Since I am still not feeling well enough to speak to you directly, I decided to send you a letter, like Paul did. Now, since I am not nearly as eloquent, let alone inspired as St. Paul, forgive me that I will rely heavily on his writing. So I start by saying, Grace to you and peace. The Thessalonians St. Paul was writing to were going through hard times when Paul wrote them. They were being persecuted and oppressed because of their faith in Christ Jesus. And since Paul cannot visit them, he writes them a letter. And he starts his letter by praising them. He tells them he always thanks God for them because of their work of faith, their labor of love and their steadfastness in hope. Their faith, love and hope was so strong that it was an example to Christians and non-believers in the area and the sign that they were God's beloved, chosen people. Faith, love and hope. Like them, we are also going through hard, trying times. We are reaching the point where most of us will know people who are infected by this virus. Colleagues at work, family members, friends. We are all struck by the new measures that are in place, which may cause, to, cause you financial insecurity, loneliness or anxiety. And we all have to deal with the insecurity of not knowing how long our lives will be like this. And the, and the responsibility to keep ourselves, our loved ones and our neighbors safe. All of this is a lot to bear. So where can we find the strength to keep going? Like the Thessalonians, we can find it in faith, love and hope. The Thessalonians had faith in the living and true God. Paul writes in verse 9. We are living a time of great insecurity. We have this new virus going around and science keeps learning new things about it as we go along. Politicians have to make decisions based on the information we have, even when we don't know everything now. Politicians around the world differ greatly in how they approach the pandemic. And when we go on social media, we find as many opinions on the matter as there are people. There is so much information coming our way and it can be overwhelming and confusing. But like the Thessalonians, we can turn to the living and true God. Our God not only holds the truth, but is the truth. As Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. John chapter 14 verse 6. And when our life feels like we are standing on sand and the ground is slipping away from underneath us, we can turn to our rock and build a house there. Our God is the truth. He is strong and he is unchanging. So whenever we feel overwhelmed, insecure or confused, we can turn to him for rest, peace and truth. This is the God of our faith. Second, the Thessalonians shared love. They loved each other and their neighbors, which was a sign of God at work in them. But not only that, Paul calls them beloved by God and chosen by him. Now I know, my dear brothers and sisters, that you too are beloved by God and chosen by him in Christ Jesus. His Father and our Father loves you dearly. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16. The God who loves us is a God who is there for us when we are in trouble. And because he loves us, he listens to us. He cares about our sorrow and he can give us comfort even in the midst of our distress. In Psalm 13, David is crying out to God. Where are you, God? Why are you not answering me? How long must this go on? But at the same time, David knows God is there. And he declares, I trusted in your steadfast love and my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Psalm 13 verse 5. The God who loves us is always there, even in the darkest of times. He is even there when we don't believe it, when we don't see it or feel it. He is there for you today with every feeling you are carrying right now, be it loneliness, grief or pain. So go to him, because he is the God of love, the God who loves you. Remember also that your community loves you too. If you need help, if you need a chat, if you need a prayer, reach out to the people around you. That we have to keep physical distance does not mean we cannot be there for each other and love each other. You can reach out to us if you need us. We are here for you. Don't be shy to reach out to your friends if you need them. We tend to think we have to suffer in silence, that we cannot bother others with our stuff. But that's not true. Cry the contrary. So talk to each other. Share your burdens. And if you think someone in our community might be suffering, might be lonely or sad, don't be shy to reach out to them. They will not think you're meddlesome, but will appreciate it. Just letting someone know you are thinking of them and praying for them can really lift someone's spirit and make a difference. That's the strength of the community of love. And finally, the Thessalonians had hope. They had hope in Jesus. They waited for him, the Son of Heaven, whom God raised from the dead and who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. We are waiting for the same Jesus. We may be assured, as the Thessalonians were, that whatever suffering, persecution, oppression, illness or sorrow we may face in this life, this is not the end of the story. According to Isaiah, it's not the end until every valley shall be lifted up, Every mountain and hill be made low, and every uneven ground shall become level, and every rough place will become plain. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4 and 5. So the best is yet to come. We have a life in His presence, where there is no pain or sorrow left ahead of us. This is our hope. And that Jesus who accomplished that, our living hope, is the one who is with us now, today. He is the God of love and he is the truth. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray unto your faith, love and hope. Reach out to God, and as he did with the Thessalonians, he will pour out his Spirit upon you. 
The grace of our Jesus Christ be with you.